Hey everyone, today I'm going to give you a guide about a deck from my team Michin Miri, which he played over the last um, days on his stream. So if you haven't seen his stream, check it out, it's pretty cool, he's very analytical. Um, he's probably the analyst of um, the Queen Saints, so to say. In, in this deck guide we're talking about um, the cards, like how you deal with um, the cards in certain rounds, how you want to structure your rounds, and so on and so on. Um, then we talk quickly about the mulligan, about the gameplay plan, and then we head straight into some gameplay matches in can then see how the deck performs in live action, so to say. I hope you enjoy. If you like what I'm doing and you want to get like weekly in depth guides, then subscribe to this channel. And let's go! Let's start with the most important thing about this deck. We want to play two long rounds, and we have two cards to get a lot of engine value out of the deck. The first card is Portal, and the second one is Waters of Broccolan, which we typically pull through Fauve. So the thing is, Portal can pull us either Fletchlings or Elven Swordmasters. The sooner we play the Fletchlings, the more harmony value they will actually get. And the uh, sooner we play Swordmasters, the more often we can uh, use the tick. Typically, we want to try to get Elven Swordmasters on the hands uh, so we can play Portal and then get the Fletchlings on the board. Because, like, to be honest, like those are just like since we have like so many different Squared Tail tags in the deck, harmony is all we can like. This is like where we can get the most value out of it. The thing is also, um, you want to play Portal in round 1, because Portal has the additional benefit of thinning the deck. So if you play Portal in round 1 and we get like 2 extra cards out of the deck, it means that in round 3 we are able to get way easier to our good cards like Great Orcs or Barnabas, whatever we need there. So, um, long round, and um, what, uh, what also Brocklin does for uh, as well is like, what of Brocklin also gives us 2 Fletchlings on the board. So, uh, when we use Portal in round 1, we want to do the same thing for Fauve and Waters of Rockylong in round 3. If we don't have Fauve on hand, we can actually use the Dana charge to pull Fauve to get like a guaranteed Waters of Rockylong in round 3 if you don't have it. If you think you need it in round 1 and like you don't have Portal, then you can also like already use um, Waters of Rockylong in round 1, but the problem is then Portal can't be pulled by Dana, so you're missing out like the guaranteed engine value in run 3, and run 3 is the round which we need to win for sure, so um, try to keep it for run 3. What's also important is, is if you pull Waters of Broccolong with Fauve, um, Waters of Broccolong only gets you one Dryad Fletching on the board, which is like playing it way below its provision cost, so you always want to have a Dryad on the board before you play Waters of Broccolong. And by playing Fauve and then Waters of Broccolong, um, you have already dried on the board because Fauve is a dried, so you get like your two dried fetchlings in one turn and you don't need to, you know. So that's like the important thing here. Then we have other cards as well. Now because we have um, we have this start of the round engine, so to say, for port, like for the dried fletchlings, but we also have a movement package, and that's like our second engine, which we want to play in each round as well. So we want to play two engines, so to say, and um, the main card of this deck is the Sentinel. Depending on where you play, if you play it on the range row or on the melee row, um, it either like deals one damage in the melee row to each enemy when it moves, or if you play it on the range row, it actually buffs each friendly unit that moves in our side on the board. And we have a lot of cards that actually move, so um, the most important one here, um, I can show you here. I think <laughs> the Dryad, like the um, the Dryad Matron, is the, probably the, the, the best thing you can co uh, you can use uh, together with the Sentinel. It gets you two points per turn extra because it will move, like buffing a unit by one, and at the same time the Sentry will also buff it by one. So it's like two points per turn. If you play the Trend Boar, you also get one point per turn because you can move like every turn, in addition to its value, so like you can get a lot of engines up there. And the last one is like Samum. Samum per se is not an engine, but it can give you like five points if you have Sentinel on the board. Um, and someone also sets up your crushing trap if you want to use it in the end. And the good thing about um, Sentinel is also you have uh, sentries, is actually you have two of them in the deck. So if you haven't played in round one, you can actually get like two of them out in round three. And um, so maybe one sticks to the board and like can give you this enormous value you can create from it. Then we have round starters because like we want to split every round into like um, a starting round, like into, into a bit of starting, into a middle round, and like into the end of the round. And the round starters are 
all our engines like we want to play them as soon as possible to get the most engines like we already talked about portal what is a proc lung we talked about the movement package but we also have cards like milver and like as we already talked about uh sword master as well so the sooner you get them on the board the more value um, they get if you are already at like let's say card four or something it doesn't really make sense to like it will you can still play them but like they you already lost a lot of value out of them ideal is for example if you get portal with two fretchlings or you play Waters of Proclung into Fletchlings, and then you play Milva, for example, then already the Fletchlings will buff themselves because Milva is a human, and therefore um, Harmony will trigger. So um, start with from the left to the right, so to say, um, and don't play more around status than I would say, like one card to three cards. Like after that, you maybe you should already um, switch to like your middle cards. The next ones are our finishes. Um, we have like the Great Oak, we have Barnabas, and we have the Crushing Trap. And we have Dennis. Great Oak and um, Dennis are two cards that really thrive of st sticking to a row. So, for example, if you have like a Sentry out there and maybe you have the Dried Matron out there, you just want to play everything into the range row. So, like Oak and Dennis will get the most value possible. Oak is also an interesting card because you can switch between removal and buffing. So if you see like the enemy has like a key engine card on his field or her field, then you can also play Oak a bit sooner just to be able to remove that engine card. While Dennis is just like amazing if you play him as late as possible because it buffs, if you play him on range row, um, he will buff up everything on the row by one. Barnabas you can um, play, it's probably the finisher you want to play earliest, as soon as you have like a, a dwarf there, as soon as you have a dryad there, and as soon as, you have an, uh, as soon as you have an elf there, you can already drop Barnabas, you don't need to wait until like your very last card, um, because um, as soon as like you have um, every one of these three types, um, you will get the most value out of him. And Crushing Trap, this is like the cast you want to play as your second last card. Um, if you have someone in hand, you can actually use it like to get even more cards into another row, so Crushing Trap will give you like even more value, and um, yeah, that's that. Then we have some interesting cards as well, like you want to typically play those in the middle, um, or in certain situations, we have Vigabor, we have um, Ida, and we have interestingly the Dryad's Keras, which we have two um, of those in the deck. Gabor is interesting because he can either give uh, you resilience or immunity. So, for example, if you are not able to win round one, what you want to do is, um, if the enemy, for example, dry passes you in round two, which is like the most, the biggest error he can do, because you want to play two long rounds. Then you can play Gabor in the melee row, you get resilience, and therefore you already get like five points for the next turn, and also already a target for a Barnabas. If you want to have, um, if the enemy like plays a lot of control, you can start with, like, not start with Gabor, but you can play Gabor in between uh, as an immune unit in, for example, you can play Milva, Gabor, and, like, use two immune units the enemy can't get rid of, if you don't have Waters of Brockle, of course, like, that's, of course, your main target. Then we have um, Ida, and Ida is interesting because it Ida is just straight value because you can, on range draw, it buffs a unit by three, but if you play on a melee row, you can destroy an artifact of an enemy, especially for example against Arcus Queen, but also against um, certain other um, decks. Ida is really good, like Summoning Circle is probably a typical go-to target for this, um, and well, she's a good tech card. What's interesting here is Dryad's Keras, because um, Dryad's Keras gives you like six points for four, which is not bad per se, but you need to play it kind of early because if the enemy is able to pass you on that, you, you won't find the value. So you lose a lot of tempo by playing Dryad's Keras. But, and this is the impor important fact, if you play with the stack against Nilfgaard, for example, if you have a Dryad on the board and you use Dryad's Keras, then Dryad's Keras will purify the unit before it will uh, add the vitality bonus. So if, uh, if it's bleeding, if it has a lock on it, you just Play Dryad's Keras, the lock is gone, the engine will tick again, and it will actually get stronger because, um, well, it has the vitality buff. So, very important for removing locks. Then we have some other cards uh, in the deck like Panther, like Spores, etc. Those are cards, you if you get them on your hand, like in like this situation is good for them, then you play it. If you play, for example, with Panther against the Tail deck, you just mulligan them. The important cards of the deck we, we just covered, the rest depends on your situation. About the mulligan, we have a lot of cards that like we want to have in our hands, like the most of them are like our key engine cards as we desc uh, described with Portal, Forest, Sentry, uh, Matron, Milver, the Trent Boar and Gabor. With Gabor, 
Gabo is probably the least important here, but as I said, like if you lose round one, he can help you to get some this, like this extra value of four and three. Cards we don't want to have are our fledglings because we're gonna pull them through the portal, and what is a proculon we also don't want want to have on our hand because we want to pull it with Fave or worst case if you also don't have Fave in hand we play Dana into Fave into what's a Procolung and generally like too much of everything. This deck is centered around Harmony and like if, especially if you get the Fletchlings out in run 3 you want to have as many different cards in your hand as possible like, like different decks would say you want to have um, humans you want to have a dwarf you want to have like maybe even the panther you know like also triggers the, the Fletchling so um, if you have too much of the same thing you probably want to mulligan it. Also, you don't want to have, for example, like all the engine cards in your hand, for example, like two matrons and two sentinels, because you probably don't want to play all of those already in round one. You probably can win the round with those, um, but the question is like, what do you play in later rounds? So, for example, one sentinel should always be there for round three as well. Uh, let's quickly talk about the gameplay plan. Um, the first thing we already told, uh, I talked about, it's like play two rounds. You want to play two long rounds to get the most engine value out of your deck. You want to play some starters, some mid cards, some finishers, but not too much of a type. You want, don't want to have too many finishers on, on your hand, don't want to have too many starters on your hand. So um, if you are unsure like what to play, check out like the, the, the first section of the guide again to see like kind of like what is like what are your like starter cards, what are your like, finisher cards. And when you mulligan, try to, to split it up so you have um, some cards of each of the type. What's important is, is you should try to win round one, because um, the biggest, biggest lose condition of the stack is if the enemy is able to bleed you in round two. Even if you're card up here, um, if you lose all your key, uh, key cards, if they bleed you off your engines, then it goes into top deck scenario in round three, and you literally have no card that really can put a lot of points out in like one turn. There may be Barnabas if you're able to get like a dwarf onto the, onto the board, maybe an elf, but even like Barnabas alone is probably not enough to win against like let's say like um, a big um, a big Glusty Verb or um, a big whatever like you know small blood units with Knut and all the stuff. So um, try to win round one for sure and then just try to pass round two so you can get into a long run three. And um, typically you want to use Dana and three for either setting up the engines or like to grab a finisher. So since Dana is able to pull, uh, get us like up to 10 points of provision, I think, um, there's nearly, you can play Barnabas, you can play Fava, you can play Trentbor. Sometimes, for example, if I have a Sentry or a Dryden Matron uh, at the start of the round, I also, I, I just play the Matron or the Sentry and then use Dana just to get the other piece of the big movement engine as well. Um, this could be, for example, like your second uh, turn play after you played what's Brock Lung, for example, if you had four in hand. So um, think what you need to get like those engines going as early as possible. And if you have all the engine pieces, then just use um, Dana for grabbing a finisher. And then I would say, well, let's head into some example matches and see how this deck could be played. Nilfgaard. With all its locks, that will be tough. Let's see if we, we have. We didn't. We didn't get curious, so that may be a problem. Generally, engine wise, like it's not what I'd like to see. This is okay. Combination of tramp, but I think it will get removed anyway. But hey, we can try. Watchers, four. Okay, better. We could start off with four. Problem is like. Do we run into Ox right away? Because if you run into Ox right away, it, like, we may have a problem. I also try to play this with Milva, Trent Burr, and like the movement. Um, I think I need to decide here. I'm going to risk ball here. Wind whistles, willows whip. We will see. There we go. Just as we do. Uh, let's see if you can aux right away. Doppler, okay, cool. It's this version. Doesn't even have full hands. It means like probably has some tactics in hand. We go for Milva right away. Then we use the movement synergy later. Don't you fret about me? Can take okay. care of myself? That's what we do. We play two starters. Now we think about what else? Could use a matron. Still. 
Doesn't trigger harmony. But hey. Or we actually go for Panther. There we go. Let's get rid of this. Let's play one more turn until we use technical advantage. And then we probably um, end, end, end the round, I guess. I'm thinking of if we wanna. Maybe we could play Ida just for the value. Do you think he can make it? Like currently it's like eight points, like two cards he can do it for sure. All our cards only tick as soon like as long as they have value. Currently overkilling this a bit, that's my problem. There we go. I'm currently thinking of passing next turn. Question is if you can do it in two cards or not. That's like the main question. If you can do it in two cards, then it would be bad if you pass because then he again can delete this. Yeah, he already passed. Look at this. That's why I didn't play another engine card. We want to have those later. Okay, that's Keras. That may be interesting for the locks. Portal, very good. Um, do need redstone. And Flashling, so I don't need as well. We have two cards to play. We could get rid of Samu, just because we don't need it. And then we probably play Gabor. I mean, I think he can lock it or get rid of it or whatever. Not sure if you want to need it next round. We have Dennis. And this way at least we get another lock out of him, which we then he doesn't have in run free. Beast for man. Or sorry, look at this. This was actually a pretty good trade. We got Sarah out, that's important. Okay, I think now we can safely pass. That was not bad, like getting Sarah out is actually really an achievement here. Can I use Dana to pull Barnabas? We don't need a Fletchling. Threadmaster is not bad. We can, uh... Okay, we got Barnabas. So, what do we want to. We probably want to get the Matron then. We want to get the Matron. Or a Sentinel. Depends on what he kills, I guess. Uh, Rules on another one stone. It's just like the Wildcat. It could be anything. This we need for a lock. Let's try it. I think you go for Sentinel right away because then you can play Matron. We need to play this here because of the... Oh, it's, it's hard though. If you pull Swordmaster before you play Fletchling, we have a problem. So I need to kind of play them in the front row, but then like I need to play everything into the front row. Only this, uh, this one in the last, in the, in the back row. Also means that Dennis won't find the full value. So... Do we lose out on two points, but therefore we're sure... Ah, you know what. I always find a way. Okay. That's it then. Get the sentry out here. And immediately get us up to five. Damn infiltrator. That's the lock, that's why we have um, the Karras. Let's play transport first. Because you want to like. Uh, unlock him and like get immediate value from the trend bar. Oh, you could just play next century actually, then play. Um... Sometimes I've had okay, so the question is like, what is like more important? Trend bar is not bad. The question also is what does it do to Matron? Don't 
Okay, let's give that off a two. We could have decided to play front row, actually. Like, we should have probably picked our own state with it, like the front row. Now I'm like playing. Sen well, sentries need to play in the back row anyway, so. Question is do we play next into the front or into the back? I don't know. Even though I haven't sword muscles, we probably want to play it into the front. Let's play front. Next round we play the Karas. And we either play it onto the trend or onto the sentry, depending if, you, uh, if the matron will be killed or not. That is the decision here. Let's see. That's the good thing about carrot. Like we can really select what we need. Okay, so we may actually kill this. Um, I think he will, he will then kill this one though, and this one will. This is an easily killed as well. Just needs a slave driver, and like he has slave drivers for sure. So by using like playing it on trend war, I think he can get me up well out of this. We hit, so we hit the double up right. There we go. He will not kill the sentry, but that's it. I mean, that's how it works. At least we got the trend point. We can play Swordmaster now, and maybe like maybe this survives as well. We don't know. It's like not perfect, but it's a half each turn. Sure. I don't care too much. I don't think there will be a lot of movement going on. Let us sing the song of steel. If transport we can also play most the next round we still get like a target for the matron. Let's get this either. Sure, professional, makes sense. I don't get a luck for this, but hey, let's kill this. Alone because of the slave inventory value. Question is what Shook will do. Um Create a place code infection card. I mean, all the others like we want to play it later. So, smuggler. I think it's kind of like the best thing. It's in that engine, so sure. And it's a human. You already have a human on board. Oh yeah, infantry. Well, it is like that. It is how it is. He currently has card advantage of one because of um, yes. how it comes Roach. It's going to boost these two, I guess. Next, then we can play into this again, and the last is then the Great Oak. Okay. And there's Shoop, okay. Oh, it's not even Shoop, he's actually... Okay, so probably this is Shoop then, I guess. Well, okay. Free, free, yeah, it's fine. So, getting probably this distance. There we go. We're a bit behind right now, and like, shoot, gets a lot of value. Let's see. Oh, it's Vien. Oh, this will be interesting. Um, well, it's. This won't trigger anymore, so. Mr. Black Angel Axe, or whatever. Uh, we have two movement packages, that's good. We have the waters. We have portal, so that's pretty good. So we're gonna get rid of this and the waters, I guess. Spores, spores, it gets crawl. Maybe. 
I mean, he will kill those, I guess. That's pretty sure. Spores could be useful. Carries, I don't know. Probably not. Dennis. Let's see. Let's see. I'm gonna play Portal and Meteor for sure, because, like, if you play Portal and Meteor, what's happening is if you get, like, a Swordmaster, then it will be able to do some damage. Uh, what do we do with you? Carrots. Two Fleshlings, perfect. So, let's see. Like, he can kill one for sure. Question is, can he kill the second one as well? We will see. I think you even play Swordmaster next. I mean, the thing is, do we, we could also play Matron next. Just trying to, like, get an engine overload. Or we go Trendborn next. And then Sentry. We'll see. Kill, maim, destroy! So we definitely need to do some... <clears throat> some harmony here. The thing is, like, he can still... If, oh, actually, he used Krach. Uh, Swordmaster or Transport. I think we go with, with Transport here. There we go, triggering into Fletchlands. And sadly it's now at 2, so... But the good thing is, like... He may, is able, he may be able to kill this. If he, like, hits this with a 1, he can actually get the Paracap now, then he can kill this one instead of this. I fear nothing. Oh, he's going for Transport, okay. Well, that's interesting. It means we probably play um, the Matron next. Um, the thing is, it keeps this at 2, which means that it will die, actually. Um, but then he needs to kill this one, this one may survive. If he would have tried his carries, actually, it would have been pretty good here. It would be better than Spores. Uh, but it was my bad, so... Let's go for the Matron here. Doesn't trigger Harmony. But we now have another engine on the board and we probably want to play with the Sentry. Oh, it was, I'm not sure, like, this this was tough. This was tough. Swordmaster would have been good as well. Would have triggered Harmony of both. So then we don't even need to play Sentry now. We can't crack the last one. We're still going to keep playing here. We're going to play a Swordmaster. We had seven. We can we, can we actually make this? He, does, he, hasn't, he hasn't used his um, tactical advantage yet, so we're still fine. One of the runes then could surprise us, like maybe get something interesting. Sure. Now we're getting into a territory where we are uncomfortable playing. It's 5-10. Can we make this in two cards? I highly doubt it actually. We have to pass here, even if I don't like it. And he is probably now, probably now wants to push us very hard. We may want to play. Let's see if we get Father, for example. That's the Karas again. Barnabas can help us in this round either. Don't need spores, I guess. Some, um, hmm. It's tricky. It is tricky. We could fish for Milva, we could fish for Fob into waters. Or we just play Gabor. Like his finisher here. To get like five extra points. And we have a decent chance to draw into her next round. Oh, we just can kill it, right? Okay, so we actually just keep... That's actually pretty fun here. The question is, do we... Do we use Dana for Gabor? I don't think so. I think we're going to use Dana to like get everything set up. There we go. So we now... The good thing is like we're starting on blue. And I think you made a big mistake by not pushing as well too. Um, because playing second is not too bad, actually. Uh, playing first is not too bad for her. It's Milva, that's perfect. There's a Matron, that's good. Sentry, okay. I'm going to see. 
ball that we can pull. And then we could immediately play Milver. And then we just keep this. I mean, like, not too bad. Like, we have those still. We don't get the Dried Matron, though. Like, we don't have anything moving. It's not too bad, though. It's not too bad. Let's play Dane. There she is. I'm going to play everything in the back row. There's the waters. And there's Milva. We have five, they are also rel relatively safe, so, so. We have three engines right now on the board. Let us put our steel to the test! Yeah, no. That's like. It's, <laughs> it's unfortunate, but like, it's fine. You can kill Fall now if he wants to. We play Dread Metro and it may die. And then the Sentinel. Uh, let's, let's start off the Sentinel here. We're missing out um, on one tick of the Matron, but this way we actually can buff up the Matron to four. I'm even tempted to play another Sentry first. So he like plays his removal onto the Sentries instead of the Matron. Okay. Sure. There we go. Milver is... Okay, so what do we do here? We start now with the Matron. And now we get her to 5, which is pretty good. He doesn't have Blood First enabled so far. And we go Pew Pew. She may be the target of a big removal spell at the end. But, like a spell of, let's say... There's, there's like, especially in Skeller, there's like a lot of stuff you can do. Start with Geralt Professional. It, it, there's like... Um, How's it called? Oh my god, like, it's crazy, like the big hound. <laughs> Mark, no, not Mark. Ulvedin, Ulvedin, like, could be targeted here. And he actually killed one of the sentries. We kind of think of playing Runes and see what we get, or we just play either to boost up the sentry again. On the other hand, if you don't play Karras now, it won't find value. I think we have one more turn there, so. The time of the white frost the white light is nigh. And you get two additional points per turn now because of the moving package. There we go. Next needs to be carries. Currently we have elf dried like Barnabas is safe, I think. As long as it doesn't Kill the Kremlin. Does he kill the Matron? I actually kills the Sentinel, that's actually okay, that's fine. So Matron is still able to take the Aztec Karras. Let's see if Ida survives, otherwise like Karras will not find the value we need, but this turret looks good. Let's see what Rune still will create ourselves. Okay, we don't have an artifact. Panthers, nice. Panther is nice, I think. There we go. And we can actually reach the ship here. There we go. Triggering Milva and the Fleshling and my Matron is still ticking as well. Okay, so we have stuff ticking where it's it's not over yet. It's not over yet. We still have like the Orc and Kremlin. Questions if you want to use Orc to remove something. Could remove Harold probably. I think you removing Harold is probably the better deal. Sure. Yeah, I think we're going to remove Harold maybe. Maybe like there's something. We could also like think of removing longship. Maybe even with longship to be honest. Because Harold can get another take on Olaf, for example, but yeah. On the other hand, if you play it here. Remove the. Then we get like additional points because of the drive matron. I think we're actually going to do that. We need every point, so getting the additional point here is pretty, pretty useful. There we go. So the thing is, like, will we seek our professional? Okay. 
Okay, so that's true. Sure. Now we go with Dennis, boosting up the whole row. And you get another point through the Dried Mid turn. There we go. Whew, let's see. Okay, so I'm about to Question is like, what is the secret? It doesn't look like he is going to use the ult. So we boosted this one, this one, and we need to boost either first. And point wise, it's okay, I guess. Question is just like, what is the secret? What is the secret? And we lost like one tick here. Thanks everyone for watching the video. Subscribe if you want to see more Quent content, especially my end of Quent guides going live on weekends. And don't forget to check out my Patreon page where you can support this channel and get cool rewards in the process. My Twitch times are Monday to Thursday starting at 2 CET. See you on stream.